okay, five our five lecture and today we are going to uh, speak about uh, exchange exchange correlation functionals approximations and about two uh, two main uh, um, streams in this uh, in in the sync uh, in this uh, in this physics about LDA and GJ. We have uh, we have talked uh, a little about uh, LDA or could I say approximation when I told you about uh, Thomas Fermi method and GJ is something new but it's uh, very very useful and uh, then you have a homework uh, with, for using GJ in calculations. Previously, um, what have we considered? We considered uh, Hoenberg con con theorems. Uh, what? Uh, how? How we can summarize these theorems? All properties are determined by the electronic density and the energy functional of the ground state. state uh, so, of the lowest, uh, the lowest energy of the system is determined by the by the electronic density of the of the ground state. We can create electronic density, which will be um which will be unique so we don't have two electronic densities for uh ground state and uh, with this electronic density we can create unique energy functional so in our uh, lab works uh, we uh, solve these quantum equations and we uh find we, we are searching for this energy uh for this energy when you uh, open uh, uh, output file from quantum espresso and you see total energy, final energy, you see um, you see the agent value of this functional, mm -hmm. of uh, uh, energy functional. And uh, the way for realization, maybe it's not too good. And the way uh, the way for realization uh, of this convert uh, theorems uh, called Consham equations. Uh, what's the logic? Uh, we can uh, substitute the real system with system of non-interacting electrons, with system of equation of non-interacting uh, interacting electrons. So we can uh, uh, we can, uh, for example, we can uh, take some uh, electronic density, some first approach of electronic density, some first bad creepy approach of electronic density, then create this quantum functional, I told you about it uh, last time. So it consists of uh, um, hard energy, of kinetic energy, and of external some some external field energy. Then you create this. Then you uh, then you solve this system of Schrodinger equation, one particle Schrodinger, Schrodinger equations with this functional. You get some uh, one particle of C functions. You create this electronic density, and you are going in the circle uh, in the cycle. Uh, till you get the convergence, till you get uh, the condition you uh, stated uh, in uh, our calculations in quantum express, it was in uh, block electrons. There was uh, conf thr convergence threshold, so it was uh, about this. Uh, and uh, quantum equations are good, uh, uh, good suitable for practic practical practical applications. So. Uh, you uh, have used these practical applications uh, in our lab works. And uh, um, the problem with them, only one problem, but a big, really big problem, is that the function of, of exchange correlation energy is unknown. And today uh, I'm going to uh, tell you about uh, two good approximations of exchange correlation energy. We have used LDA, and uh, from this moment we will use DGA and we will compare it with LDA. Let's consider them in detail. So this is um, one particle Schrodinger equation from this system of equations. E, uh, we have uh, a different E for each uh, for each electron. So we, uh, this is one particle, one electron Schrodinger equation. Here is our quantum uh, potential, external field, external potential, uh, hard energy exchange correlation potential, and kinetic potential. Uh, and, uh, we need some approximations for each of these terms. And uh, I will show you all these approximations. First, we have to deal in some way with uh, kinetic energy. Uh, and there are uh, three main approximations. We can use it, non we can use non relativistic approach. This is a common Schrodinger equation without any, uh, any other things. It's just a common classic Schrodinger equation. 
then we can use scholar relativistic or full relativistic. So scholar relativistic is when we don't uh, consider uh, self, uh, don't, don't consider uh, the spin orbital interactions, and full relativistic when we consider spin orbital orbital interactions. And in this step, so from this to this, it's not big deal to make the step to to include ju just uh, some scholar uh, some relativistic things like. Uh, uh, huge uh, velocity of, uh, of electron, huge energy of electron, and usually it's uh, um, a good idea to use this approach uh, calculating huge atoms, because huge atoms, they have this df electrons, and df electrons, they are usually relativistic, they have a huge energy, that's why they have, uh, have huge, uh, huge uh, uh, speed, and for relativistic approach, even more precise, um, and uh, Next term, you have uh, a lab works with full relativistic approach, and you see that it uses it uh, uh, requires like gigabyte or more for even small calculation. Uh, and uh, these calculations we made, it was like twenty megabytes, thirty megabytes. So it was almost nothing for even it was almost nothing for our computers. But calculation with full relativistic, it's big deal. It's really a really big deal because uh, uh, this uh, spin orbital uh, interactions they are rather complicated. Um, this is about um, kinetic energy. So we can choose. We can choose. Uh, usually we use uh, scalar relativistic because it's not. Uh, it don't require huge amount of uh, researches to go from non-relativistic to scalar relativistic, but it increases um, uh, accuracy of our calculations. Then we use, um, we had to approximate in some way this external field. This external field uh, going from uh, ions. Uh, and uh, we also have a lot of, way, uh, a lot of uh, approaches. Here I briefly describe each of them. So four potential methods. We can use uh, uh, this linear, linear combination of these uh, orbitals. It calls like, Full potential linear augment, uh, augmented potential wave wave uh, methods, something like this. So we 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 take some linear approximation, some linear combination of uh, orbitals, uh, and uh, we make this uh, uh, we, we create this external potential. Then we also <laughs> can use Martin Tin approximations, also very popular. Um, when uh, it's about approximation of that. Uh, about approximation of that potential. Um, okay, we take uh, the main idea. The main idea uh, in quantum space, for example, we take uh, our system and we uh, our um, atom and we divide electrons inside this atom into parts. One part we call core electrons. They will they will be uh, near the uh, near the uh, nuclei, and we will treat them as one as one whole. Uh, system and we uh, uh, and another part is valence electrons, core electrons, and we uh, we we don't want to calculate any. Uh, we don't want to calculate each core electron, but we want to deal with each valence electron. So uh, each core electrons with nuclei, we uh, approximate with some potential, and nothing in approximation is one one way to approximate this uh, this potential. Um, then uh, we also have projector augmented play method and pseudo potential methods and we use this pseudo potential method in uh, quantum sphere so we just take um, we, we just take uh, uh, this uh, core electrons with nuclei we say that uh, we don't care uh, how uh, we don't care about each concrete electron in this core electron and we take some uh, some potential to approximate um, to approximate nuclei with the electrons. And uh, we had to deal in some way with valence electrons, and this is our way, this, this whole equation is the, is the way to deal with the valence electrons. But this, this green, green square, is how we deal with this external potential, with nuclei and core electrons, which we don't treat as valence electrons. Because we, we want to save some researchers. And another thing, Exchange correlation potential, and uh, here, uh, so uh, this potential, th this 
uh, approximations are rather clear. Um, this is a uh, Schoeninger equation. This is non. This is uh, um, Dirac equation without spin orbital interaction. This is Dirac equation with spin orbital uh, interactions. Uh, we can deal with this. This thing is also very clear. We take this uh, uh, nuclei, we take this core electrons, we approximate them in some way, and here are some ways of uh, calculating this thing. It's also not not big deal, but this thing is big deal exchange correlation. Uh, and we have plenty of ways of functionals to deal with it. The first, the very simple and historically, it's historically the first, and it's the simplest. It's holodeck approximation. It goes from uh, Thomas uh, Fermi method when Thoma, Thomas and Fermi they tried to uh, make something with, with homogeneous uh, electronic gaze, and they take and they to told that uh, we have uh, some electron, and near this electron we have some region, some small region of constant electronic density, and uh, um, then they derive kinetic energy potentials. Heart, they include heart energy, some other things. General gradient approximation. Uh, we will uh, consider it in more detail slightly later. Um, it includes not only, uh, so this is for constant density in some point. And this is for constant density in some point plus some gradient, plus some gradient between different points. And we also have some uh, more complicated uh, methods. I call it extended DFT. And it's like meta DJ. What is meta DJ? It's uh, um, well, each each uh, other method is previous method with some additional things. Uh, uh, so uh, DJ is LDA plus this gradient. Meta DJ is DJ plus gradient of kinetic energy because here we don't use a gradient of kinetic energy. Energy uh, hybrid functionals. It's some mix mix of this this. This and the uh, uh, hard epoch. Uh, quasi particles are some crazy thing. Time dependent DT, it's when we add time to this equation. We take uh, uh, Schrodinger, Schrodinger or Dirac equations with time. Uh, so all this method, they go to reality. So they go closer to re reality, but they are uh, crazy in uh, computational costing. That's why usually we will use this. Because they are, they are rather good. And uh, what about uh, quantum espresso? Uh, you can find uh, this pseudo potentials in the uh, uh, quantum espresso site. So we, we took it from the site. And you see uh, this information about each potential. Uh, we have used this pseudo potential for our applications per there. Uh, it means per Zunger. It's Zunger, it's one of the functionals inside LDA approach. So we have LDA and inside LDA approach, we have different functionals. And it means that PZ, it means that we use per Zunger. It is rather good, uh, good functional inside LDA exchange correlation. So this is for, this stands for uh, exchange correlation. I, I use the same, I use the same uh, colors. You see the green, red, uh, blue. And uh, as, as here, so uh, red for exchange correlation potential, green for external potential, and blue for kinetic energy. Uh, exchange correlation, Perdue Zunger, here is PBA. It, it's Perdue Burke Ezenhoff functional inside GJ. So this is uh, another um, set of potential uh, stands for GJ, and I type it with red. Uh, what about kinetic energy? Scalar relativistic, full relativistic. And in the case of scalar relativistic, we have nothing here in the name of pseudo potential. In case of full relativistic, we have here real, real relativistic. Um, real relativistic, that PBA, it means that uh, this functional inside GGA, um, full relativistic, PBA, GGA, then N, it means um, uh, valence electrons. And what is KG is something which I usually read, and then I don't remember what is it. It's it's something about uh, name of the guys who, who created uh, uh, this uh, pseudo potential thing. Uh, Pau it means how how we treat this um, uh, external potential. 
POW, it stands for projector augmented wave methods. And uh, I typed it with green. So here uh, in this in this notation, we see all these three different things uh, I have uh, we have discussed now. Kinetic energy here will be nothing in case of scar relativistic, here will be real in case of full relativistic. Um, then uh, exchange correlation functional PZ or PB. Uh, it can be uh, other some other set of uh, some other functionals. We have a lot of functionals. Uh, and then uh, PAL here can be some, some things like soft potentials and some other uh, things, but we will use PAL because it's rather simple and it's uh, rather reliable. So it, 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 there are uh, usually, there are, you have a question? Uh, usually, there's, usually there are no problems with calculations inside this projected, projected augmented waves. So and in the name of this potential, you can see all this. All this information we can see all uh, important information you words about the change correlation energy from previous um how we uh, get it uh, we get correlation energy as some in cool as some electron electron interactions um as some moving electron interaction because we take this uh Kinetic energy functional, we um, divide it into some sing single particle, uh, in, into a single particle form and to uh, some unknown form, which we call correlation form. Because these electrons are moving, the, then uh, they, uh, I, can, I can briefly <laughs> repeat for you if you want, in a few words. So, what we have considered? We have considered um, this uh, part of Consham uh, equations, it's like uh, one particle Schrodinger equation. We have some functional, uh, some potentials here: kinetic, external, Hartree fog. <laughs> nothing. Uh, you see that we nothing. Uh, we do nothing with Hartree fog because it's just Hartree fog. It's simple, and exchange correlation. And we treat it in some, in uh, um, different ways uh, for kinetic energy approximations. We can use non-relativistic common Schrodinger equation. Scar relativistics Dirac equation without spin orbital interaction and full relativistic Dirac equation with spin orbital interaction. Um, this and this don't require usually don't require huge amount of researches, but this requires a lot of researches. And uh, we will uh, work with uh, full relativistic potentials next uh, uh, next era. This is about kinetic energy. This is uh, about external potential. We use um, what's the main idea? We take uh, our atom and we divide it into two parts. One part nuclei plus some so-called core electrons, and we treat them as some one potential. We call it pseudo potential uh, because we don't care about uh, each concrete electron inside uh, inside this uh, inside this sphere. And valence electrons, so core electrons plus nuclei and valence electrons, uh -huh. and and this green things. It's all methods to approximate in some way this core electrons plus nuclei, how we do deal with it. And exchange correlation, um, we have told uh, about local density approximation, uh, and we used it in our calculations. Today we will uh, deeply uh, tell, uh, speak about it, and then we will discuss general gradient approximation. It's LDA plus some gradient of uh, electron density. Here we have some constant electron density in some small um, in some uh, small uh, region near near uh, some point, and here we we have this LDA LDA plus some electronic uh, from plus some gradient, and we have some more complicated things like matter J, Gibbs functionals, and I will tell you about them uh, slightly later, more in more detail, and in next uh, in next lecture, lecture, and how we can see it inside uh, quantum espresso. We can see all the things uh, in uh, our the potentials, and I marked them with the same colors: green for um, external potential, bow here. Uh, this is uh, silicon which we used for our calculations. So uh, Kg bow bow means projector augmented waves. So we uh, we use this name inside in this uh, uh, in this title. Then we use. Uh, Red is exchange correlation. Perdit Sunger is a functional inside inside LDA approach. PZ 
Ferdi Sünger, Bohir, Pibir, Pibir is Ferdi Burg Eisenhof inside Juve. So we can also see it in the, in the name, Pibir. Uh, then uh, kinetic energy. Scalar relativistic is common without any things. And uh, full relativistic, in case of full relativistic, we will have, see here rel. So we, we can see all this information. Uh, we can see how this pseudo potential treats um, kinetic energy external potential and the uh, uh, exchange correlation potential um, in, in the calculations. So you can see all this information in the in the title. And about the change correlation energy from previous lecture. Relation energy, some part of kinetic energy. We don't know it. Um, exchange energy is some part of uh, um, electron electron potential energy. Uh, we can divide it into Hartree energy, and usually we don't have any problems with, with Hartree energy because it's common. It's it's common uh, uh, Coulomb interaction. It's simple. Uh, and this thing, I showed you some formulas with my functions, um, and it caused a change because we change this. Uh, uh, electron because because we change this uh, uh, electronic uh, um, uh, orbitals and it goes it, it rises from uh, spin uh, from spins because we have spins uh, our electrons are fermions so that's why we need some uh, uh, advanced mathematics to to treat it and we usually we can um, combine it with some exchange correlation functional because we don't know this we don't know this and uh, what's the matter so if we work with two uh, some entities, un unknown entities, or with one some unknown, uh, unknown entity. And some approach to uh, exchange correlation. Uh, variation, uh, variational approach, is this is the thing which I uh, told you few, uh, one minute ago. Uh, we have this uh, uh, formula from Hartley, from Hartley Fock um, Hartley Fock method. It rises from Slater determinant for uh, um, for uh, fermions because for bosons we don't have this term, but for fermions we have this exchange thing. This and this we we, we change the usually it, it here should be like phi, phi g um, complex conjugated on phi g r r prime and. K should be in this part, but we exchange them. We use G here and G here. So we just exchange them and it matters a lot. It uh, uh, matters a lot for physics because um, it's different uh, uh, spins. And uh, from a variational approach, uh, we say that uh, because of the spins, our atoms uh, want, our electrons uh, tend to be as far as they can. Um, that's why they uh, that's why spins are hugely um, influence on on this uh, on this system. Uh, and but the problem with correlation energy, you see, it determines uh, as a difference between the total energy, but we don't know the total energy of the exact ground state. We don't know the exact ground state and the energy calculated using the Slater determinant. Okay, we have created. Energy using the determinant, but we don't know it. We can uh, take it from some experiment, for example. We can take this total energy from experiment, and then make this uh, uh, of, of from some Monte Carlo methods, uh, uh, and then we can say that uh, yeah, uh, the difference will be correlation energy, but it's it's nothing. So we don't have any useful information from here. We don't have any form. For change, we have some form. We can uh, make something from this form, but for correlation, we don't have. Uh, uh, probabilistic approach. So correlation energy represents an additional decrease in energy due to the attempts of electrons to avoid each other. Yeah, what's what I told. Uh, thereby lowering the energy of columbic repulsion. And uh, here arises this uh, strong correlated uh, uh, systems. So in strong correlated systems, usually it's uh, huge, massive atoms, and uh, we use uh, uh, for strong correlated system. Uh, uh, we, we say that theta is strongly correlated when its correlation energy is comparable to other energy terms. For some non-strongly uh, correlated energy uh, systems like helium, 
we see total energy minus 2.9, some exchange correlation energy, they calculated it somehow, and you see correlation is too, too small. So, you have a question? Yeah. Uh, this uh, these words like lowering the energy of columbic repulsion it means that the repulsion becomes weaker or stronger weaker weaker but if they try to avoid each other does it doesn't mean that they like tend to be as far from each other yes, as possible yes yes so like but this is kind of the same as this columbic repulsion case they also they repulse each other and try to avoid each other yeah, but yeah, but here uh, we also add some spin things. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, from, uh, yeah. Just uh, two uh, two electrons will be uh, usually will will tend to avoid each other because it's uh, it's you it's common Coulomb repulsion, and also we we had to include spins in some way because it's not it's not trivial uh, to use it, and spins also add some uh, spins uh, uh, ori uh, oriented in one way. They will be uh, more repulsive than spins oriented in in different ways, and it's also the problem. And uh, you see that in uh, common in some common atoms, uh, in some uh, non-massive atoms like helium, uh, correlation energy will have like one point five percent of the total energy, and exchange thirty five percent. So it's huge. Exchange energy can be huge. Uh, for uh, other atoms like argon here, um, exchange 5.7% and correlation 0.14%. So it's not huge, but for some um, huge F uh, atoms, it can uh, they can be compared. So they can uh, uh, take, for example, five and like four or five or six percent. And then, and then we say that the system is strongly correlated because we have very uh, fast, very relativistic electrons, and it's uh, really hard to calculate all these electrons. And usually the strongly created uh, systems we can treat um, in some uh, uh, tricky ways, like, uh, for example, we have some method calls, which I uh, called LDA plus U, or GDA plus U. So plus U. U is some um, potential which we put by our hands, on the um, external orbitals of this heavy atoms, for example, on F electrodes of R F orbital, we pay, uh, we, we just put some uh, potential like one electron volts or two electron volts is huge. One or two or three electron volts is huge uh, amount of energy. And we uh, should, uh, uh, mm, and with this new, we, uh, uh, lowering this strongly correlation, uh, the strongly correlation, the strong correlations, and treat the system like the common system. But it's some tricks. I don't like it, but uh, uh, it's rather common in calculations. This U tricks. This U is uh, like it arises from Hubbard. Yes. From yes. Hubbard model. Yeah, but we, we can change it. But we, we can change it by our hands. I, I tell, I, I say that we put it by our hands because uh, usually there is no U in this system, but we uh, just take, but j just forcefully take this uh, uh, external potential to to this uh, orbitals. Usually it's the orbitals or f orbitals. So nobody nobody uses U for p electrons or for s electrons. We should use it for comp. For, comp for some complex orbitals. And another approach is uh, exchange correlations uh, holes, correlation holes. So uh, uh, they say that, uh, yeah, the uh, electrons tend to keep away from each other. And uh, uh, we can say that in, that's why in some um, region, uh, the probability to find electron decreases. So the, the, uh, it means that um electron uh, electron uh, electron density decreases in some way uh demonstrates the decrease in the probability of finding an electron at the coordinate r prime given its presence at point r so and uh, we can calculate it in some way so these guys they took that that term from Hartley fog which i showed you with orbitals and uh, they uh made some tricky thing like 
electronic density and decrease of electronic density to find some electron in some point because we have electron in this point. Not, not electron, but we have some probability n, n of r to find electron in that point because it's uh, the definition of electronic density. The probability to find electron in some in some point. And that's that was few words about electronic density. And now we are going to compare of these uh, uh, methods. Uh, usually um, in physics, in uh, this uh, DFT physics, uh, we use uh, um, Jacobs ladder. Um, uh, Jacobs ladder to compare them. What was uh, so? This is from uh, Led Zeppelin, uh, from one of the, their uh, albums. And uh, uh, it's also Jakob's letter. So it was some some uh, uh, religion thing, and it was Jakob uh, who uh, who had a dream, and in the, in the dream he saw this ladder which goes to the heaven, and the angel stayed uh, in this heaven, and uh, he saw some, uh, and he told, yeah, we, it's it's some miracle, and uh, he he became very religious man because because of this. So so, so this. This concept of Jacob's letter is some uh, moving to some uh, ideality, to some to some heaven. It's very uh, important in the uh, uh, Bible, and uh, uh, we use it to compare uh, some methods. We st started from Hartley Fock. It was uh, very first method to, to make some creations, and here we have we have ideal uh, situation heaven full of purity, which consists with nature uh, full fully. And we, uh, we, we will go from this ground, from Hartley Fog, to heaven, step by step. First step, we have LDA. Uh, sometimes we can also say about LSDA when we, when we include spin to this, uh, to this approximation. Local density approximation, just uh, uh, homogeneous electronic gas. Uh, we can uh, extend it to use spins to LSDA. It depends only on electronic density. I uh, marked here electronic density and R. Then we go to J. I take this LDA, improve it in some way, and add some density gradient, and I get GJ approach. This is first two uh, steps, and uh, um, usually we will work with these steps because they are as good and they don't dem demand a lot of calculation, a lot of uh, researchers. Um, third step calls meta GJ. We take GJ and add some kinetic energy density. Uh, we can take it in uh, two forms, like uh, uh, this on this. So we have uh, so kinetic energy uh, gradient. Here we have just co common gradient. Here we will have Laplacian of this uh, of this uh, NR. Meta -DJ. It's also a good approach. Um, and then we have uh, two additional steps, uh, hybrid DJ or double hybrid DJ. It's usually called hybrid DJ. We'll uh, tell about them, uh, we'll discuss them uh, uh, in next lecture. Not next week, but uh, next lecture. And uh, it depends on the occupied orbit. And it consists why why it called a hybrid because we usually take some parts of this of this and even of Hartley Fock to create this hybrid uh, hybrid things. Um, it's some mixture of the functionals of lower elements of all this of all the things and um, they are uh, so so uh, for example why why do we need this hybrid uh, GJ? Uh, LDA and GJ they usually underestimates uh, gap, uh, and you saw it uh, in uh, laboratory work. How uh, that um, we have created uh, diamond and it was like four electron volts, but uh, a real uh, gap is like almost six electron volts. It's huge. The electron volts is huge, but we can uh, make we can add some. Uh, Seeing some term to GGA and LDA to uh, to correct this gap, and uh, we can add, for example, some heart fog, uh, some element of heart fog to correct it, and then we ha we have some hybrid hybrid GGA. 
and uh, um, hybrid functionals. Um, and uh, they are very demanding, they are very slow, and uh, they are not stable. Um, it means that, uh, for example, J and LDA, usually uh, we can calculate even creepy system and everything will be okay. Maybe results will be not so good, but everything will be okay. We, we will finish the calculation, they will converge. But hybrid J, we have, have to try to converge them. Uh, we have to take all these parameters. It has a lot of parameters, how we combine, in what, uh, in what parts we combine all those previous steps. And uh, um, I don't I, I don't think that it's good idea to use to use these hybrid functionals, uh, but uh, the reality is that a lot of people use them, a lot of groups create these hybrid functionals for some system, for some particular systems, and they um, use a lot of research to calculate it. Uh, sometimes they go to some traps because, uh, for example, they can uh, they want to calculate very, very precisely uh, some energy uh, uh, energy gap, um, but uh, calculating energy gap very precisely, they um, calculate uh, electronic density, for example, not precisely. So electronic density will be some crazy, but they will get some uh, energy gap. And that's also the problem with using this hybrid um, functionals. And uh, we also have some uh, non-local methods. I worked with them very uh, i have very limited experience with uh using this method for example it's like um uh, random general random pass approximations and uh, or gb it's like quasi particles methods uh they're totally crazy so it's uh, it's not uh, uh even uh dft so it's uh, it's like uh, it's like element of the dft plus plus very very uh, uh hard uh, hardcore mathematics and uh, uh, it's really hard to to deal with them. Uh, Quantum Expressor can can use some, can um, allows us to create some uh, to use some part quasi particle methods like G, GW, but it has really a lot of uh, parameters. And you should uh, now what to do? You should now your system, your physical system, uh, very good to to make this calculation. It's very demanding. And uh, today, we will only consider the steps, LDA and GJ. So first step of our ladder, first level, is local density approximation. We have uh, talked about it. Um, we have discussed it. Uh, it's based on a uh, homogeneous electronic gas from Thomas Fermi. The idea that we have this kinetic energy functional, then we um, use this uh, local density approach. So we take the, some uh, point and we say that in some circle around this point, local, uh, the density is uh, constant. Uh, it means uh, uh, local density, that's why it's called local density. Then we go to single particle S, TLDAS, and uh, we can even have some formula of it. And I showed you, I showed you how, how to use this formula. Then, uh, we can uh, uh, even calculate some, uh, we can have some formula for even exchange energy. Why we ha have it? We have it from this uh, creation host approach. You see this, uh, this exchange, uh, this EXC uh, functional, uh, and we have, we, we can approximate this, uh, uh, this exchange uh, functional with some formula. Um, correlation energy is still unknown. Uh, still unknown. Uh, we can uh, approximate it also with, uh, using uh, some uh, tricks, some uh, various methods such as Monte Carlo, random pass approximation. They are uh, rather tricky and uh, sometimes they are very um, hard to implement in some way. And different functionals like uh, Perditzunger, they uh, implement in, in some way, this correlation energy. They usually take this exchange energy uh, formula for LDA, and then um, the main difference is how they uh, calculate this electronic correlation energy. And this is general formula. Formula of LDA with spins, LSDA. We have some exchange correlation potential, which depends on N alpha, alpha, and beta. It means one spin, another spin, 
and uh, this is the whole the general formula, but we don't know it. We, we can use only the general formula. And what uh, uh, what functionals we have here inside local density approximations? Uh, one of the first, so, so first, uh, first local density approximation was first approach, uh, uh, first local density approach to uh, DFT was uh, in a um, Con and Sham paper in 1965. So they, they took Thomas Fermi model, they took these formulas and they uh, used it to calculate some, some things. But it was not ideal. And 1980, this uh, three guys was confused at New Sair, they made this uh, correlation. So they used uh, spin polarized homogeneous electron gas and they uh, make some approximation of creation energy and they took this potential. Uh, VWN, and you also can find it in uh, Quantum Espresso. If you want, you can calculate something with it, uh, compare with PC or P PPN. And it's rather pop popular, you see, 20, 25,000 uh, citations. So people use it. Uh, from last year, when I also told about this thing, uh, this is new screen. It was like 23, so it was uh, so thousand times uh, some people uh, cited this uh, LDA for 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 a year. And this is uh, correlation energy in uh, VWN. So this is how they treated it. You see, you see that it's crazy. So it's like some. Formula with some parameters we don't know x zero b um, x from x zero uh, q and and so on. So, so we have a lot of parameters we should get from somewhere. We should obtain uh, from somewhere. And uh, <laughs> these guys made a great job uh, estimating all these parameters. And this is a, this is a common problem with exchange with this correlation energy because we had to use this <laughs> this dozens of parameters uh some another things for example uh, some other functionals pz, PZ per sunger which we used it's also popular you see it's also almost uh, uh 25 24 thousand citations it has this uh, this article uh they uh, included they have included into uh, LDA self self interaction. So uh, usually LDA is uh, the formulas which I showed you. They are um, self interaction free uh, because we don't uh, we, we we create this electronic orbitals. And then we make some some of this electronic orbit uh, electron orbitals, but we don't consider how this electron how uh, for example electrons on this orbitals they interact uh, one with uh, one is other. And these guys, they tried to uh, include the self interactions and they used this and they created this per uh poten potential. And I, want to, and I think that it's, it is rather good because um, it makes, uh, it uh, um, takes us one step closer to, uh, to some, some reality by adding this self interaction. It has a totally crazy uh, formula and I even uh, didn't uh, type it here. You can you can you can you can you can see all these papers. They are free uh, and uh, and see see this formula. They are they are heavily mathematic. So all this uh, uh, all this uh, papers about functions they has really heavy mathematics. Uh, P W ninety two per G one nineteen ninety two. It's uh, LDA uh, uh, functional which uh, is rather good for physics. So these guys. They uh, used uh, correlation energy as a function of density parameter RS and some relative spin polarizations. So they added, um, they tried to include some spin elements, some some, some spins in inside in this uh, in LDA, and they made this potential PW ninety two. It's all it's also rather good. It's, we we also can use it uh, within quantum space, and you see. How many people cited in this year? Nine, nine hundred nine 
uh, guys used PW92 in their in their works. So all these um, functionals are created 30 years ago, or even 40 years ago, 1981. Um, they are still uh, actual. Actual, at maybe maybe it's some uh, um, part of the problem because if we use these old functionals and if they are still good, so maybe maybe it's uh, uh, we have some uh, uh, limitation to our theory. So maybe uh, we had to uh, jump to some uh, another level of theory, and this level of theory is rather um, is not so, is not 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 sufficient for us. Some components. Perdi uh, Zunger with some common LSDA uh, with, with, uh, with some common LDA with that formula which I showed you. Uh, with seek uh, uh, it means self inter interaction correlations. It's Perdi Zunger. This is from this is from their uh, this is from their paper. And they didn't call it per Zunger potential. They they call it sick uh, sick uh, LSDA and the Hartree Fock as as a reference. So they just compared that uh, um, for hydrogen their uh, their functional close to Hartree Fock, and this is rather far. Uh, it's, it's it's exchange energy for some uh, huge atoms like krypton. You see. To uh, it's also closer to, to Hartree Fock, but maybe it's even closer to, to nature. And this is this is crazy, some crazy things. You see, the, the biggest difference uh, between this, this, and this, but between Hartree Fock and uh, Perdi Zunger, it's not a huge difference. For correlation energy, you see, you see, exchange energy really huge, but correlation energy is rather small. Uh, it's for hydrogen. It's it's zero, and it should be zero because we have only one uh, electron. So there is nothing. Uh, th there is no other electrons for this electron to correlate with. But uh, you. But the common formula for LDA gets some uh, correlation energy. That's 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 really not uh, not not good thing, and. Uh, um, LDA, the common LDA, which was introduced in Con, uh, in Consham paper, it overestimates this uh, correlation energy because Hartley Fock and uh, PZ uh, they uh, gives um, much smaller correlation energy. and that's that's our limitation. So LDA overestimates correlation energy on hundred on two hundred persons. Um, PZ Overestimates only on twenty pairs. It's it's better. So PZ uh, better in uh, than uh, previous LDA, which was introduced introduced by Con and Shen. And LDA also significantly significantly underestimates exchange energy. So it's underestimates is like to 20, 20 persons. But um, you see, here is like 100, 200 persons. It, it can be, uh, it, it, we can consider it as, as crazy, some crazy amount of energy, but we should take in mind that correlation energy is relatively small. It's small, we add 100, 200 persons, and almost nothing changes. Because if we have for Krypton like exchange energy like this, but um, correlation energy around this 22. If you will use it like uh, even 38, you will take like 38. Almost nothing will change. And if you will underestimate this uh, exchange energy, so we underestimate it on up to 20 percent, like 10, 15 percent, and this 10 percent can be comparable comparable with 100 percent of correlation energy. So in general. Uh, that's the secret of uh, uh, success of LDA. That in general, uh, everything is okay. It uh, uh, in some uh, if we consider correlation energy, yeah, it's not okay. Two hundred persons, it's not okay. Uh, exchange energy, twenty persons, it's not also not okay. But uh, if we will sum it, it will be rather good. 
it will be rather good, but it will be rather uh, far from physics. Because uh, if we un uh, under if we overestimate something on two hundred percent, that's not that's not good. Uh, uh, that's not good. Uh, good uh, a plan to to use uh, such calculation. And uh, mm, yeah, and some another some some uh, calculations of total energy of atoms experiment. Pergutzunger. Common LGA and Hartley Fock. Um, hydrogen experiment. And Pergutzunger, they are close. And Hartley Fock also. Okay. Hartley Fock is a rather good method. It's not so. Uh, sometimes it's for some system, it's, 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 systems, it's not uh, good because of physics, because it has some lack of physics. But usually it's rather good. Experiment minus 79. Yeah, minus 79 and 4. Uh, we have really good, um, even with some problems, which I told you about overestimation of correlation energy and underestimation of exchange energy. Uh, total result is rather good. It's rather close to experiment. Argona, 14,000. You see, the difference only will in 25 uh, electron volts in 14,000. So it's, it's some uh, parts of persons. Uh, that's why PZ is good thing, is good uh, uh, functional, and we use it in our lab works. <laughs> Pergy Lang, ninety two. Uh, some formulas from the, from the from their uh, article. So they took exchange energy like this. Uh, they took some parameter RS where they included. Uh, as I told you, in PW ninety two. Uh, this Per you and one, they uh, try to include spins. How do they how do they do it? They do it with some uh, this uh, parameter RS, which uh, includes electron density of spin up and electron density of spin down. Then they uh, create some uh, parameter zeta here, like this, like the difference between the spins. Then they create some function. Uh, of this parameter, uh, trying uh, to approximate this exchange energy and some cor and correlation energy, and they have even more parameters: beta one, beta two, Rs, uh, a. I don't know what is it. A alpha. So it's crazy. You see, it, 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 um, it's the. Uh, so it's really hard to to create some uh, good approach to create some. Uh, functional for uh, exchange correlation energy. And we had to deal with some crazy mathematics, mismatics with these parameters. This is the biggest problem, all these parameters. We have to fit them in some way. We have to make uh, a lot of uh, experiments to measure uh, energy in experiments. And uh, the problem is that we can measure uh, total energy, but it's hard to measure uh, correlation energy or exchange energy. I don't, I, I don't know if we can uh, measure it with experiments. Uh, and you have to find some data to approximate it. That's, that's the problem. That's the problem with all these potentials. They are semi-empirical because we have to use some uh, data from uh, real world to, world to, um, to create these uh, potentials. Some, um, yes, uh, also some comparison from the from the paper of those guys, Perdue and Bank. They took some potentials, they took uh, Thomas Fermi, just pure LDA, um, which is not okay. Hartley Fock, rather good. LDA seek PZ, LDA, LDA PW92, and you see that all these things are, are rather cool. But LGA, uh, what is experiment? 527. Yeah, it's, the difference is like uh, 0, 06. Okay. You will see a lot of such comparisons. And um, usually it's a good idea when uh, you will have homework uh, for next time. To take GJ and compare it uh, with uh, um, with PZ, and uh, uh, you you also had to, to create some uh, some kind of table, but not so huge. 
So, uh, summarizing. Global density approximation. It's relatively simple to implement, but sometimes we uh, think that it's not so simple if we, if we see all these formulas for these functionals. It does not require a significant amount of researches. We have this uh, old good functionals, P PW, PZ, they are still, uh, and they are still actual. So we can get some uh, good, uh, for some simple um, systems, we can use them. Um, they are rather good in uh, cell constant calculations. Yeah, it's uh, it's really good to be here in uh, in warm in this in this weather. Describes metals relatively good. Why do you think? Why uh, how is it? Why it is good for metals? It's OJ. Okay. Because my, in metals we have many electrons at the same time. But we, uh, but we have many electrons in the... Uh... Yeah, also lithium is a metal one. Yeah. Oh, I thought you mean material, so... Uh, between between some, the some ions. Some of in some volume of In some volume. Uh, yeah, because uh, you, because we can approximate metals as uh, homogeneous electronic gas. Or non, in non-homogeneous, but we can approximate it as uh, electron gas. And this 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 whole uh, method it, it rose from uh, uh, from uh, this uh, electron gas. And what the minuses? Uh, has systematic error. We can't uh, do we can do nothing with this error. Um, this method they overestimates creation energy usually. So we can uh, uh, sometimes we can say that we don't we know almost nothing about creation energy. Underestimates uh, exchange and some set of potentials, uh, some functionals like PZ, PW, they reduce these errors, but they are still in uh, in in play, uh, in, and um, res result in a significant error in estimating the band gap. So band gap is not correct, and the uh, width width of electronic bands they are also not correct. I mean, if you have some for example. Uh, Energy. We, we have some energy band, and all like this, and uh, uh, its reality uh, in in LDA it will be underestimated, so it will be not so. Wins. And with all these minuses, with all these problems, we have to to do something. And uh, some people thought that a good uh, idea, a good way to solve all these problems is to add electronic density gradient, and it was. Uh, released in a uh, uh, general gradient approximation. Gradient approximation. But um, I will show you uh, the difference, the, the main difference between this, these approaches uh, in comparison with LDA, so GJ and LDA. Uh, you, uh, you saw the formula here. Yeah? It's uh, kinetic energy, uh, single particle kinetic energy functional for uh, LDA. And we can uh, compare it with. Uh, uh, GJ. Uh, in GJ, uh, you have a single particle kinetic energy functional for GJ will, be cons will consist of uh, LDA of this formula plus this gradient. So in this uh, um, in this term, they try to uh, they try to include uh, some uh, some reality. So so they 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 try to uh, move from uh, from uh, this homogeneous uh, electron gas to some inhomogeneous electron gas, where we have uh, all these gradients, where we have the non non -hom homogenic um, electron density, and uh, they created su su some functional. And that's the answer why um, why uh, this DFT, these two levels of DFT, LDA and DJ, so bad with uh, gaps. Because uh, we uh, uh, base all this, uh, all this levels, all this approach on homogeneous electronic gas, and um, it's okay for metals, but not okay for um, insulators or semi uh, semiconductors. Exchange energy with LDA, this formula, uh, which uh, overestimate, which underestimates it on uh, up to 20 20 persons. And for DJ, we also we, we take this formula and we 
just add some some crazy term with all the things. Um, I don't remember. I uh, saw, saw how it uh, derived, but I don't remember. I think it's. Uh, I think we had to integrate a word uh, to 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 get su to get such term, such 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 crazy term. So we uh, we included um, on very basic level. We included this gradient, these changes, uh, and uh, our density not only uh, constant. In some uh, in some uh, small region around uh, some point, but it changes. It changes from one region to another, and in this um, and it's closer. It's as I told, it's closer to right to reality because uh, LDA is far from reality because we don't uh, we have this constant uh, electron gas, but here we um, include changes in in uh, electron gas. And a uh, general form for exchange correlation functional will be will looks like this. We have some formula f f small, which depends on n on electronic density and on gradients of electronic density. That's the idea. And about some uh, functionals, uh, some uh, yeah, I didn't change it. The name so it is first uh, one of first. Uh, Functionals was B eighty eight. Okay, uh, I, I think you got the idea how 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 we how we name it. It's the name of the guys and the, uh, and the year. Um, B eighty eight means that we have some other functionals which calls B, but uh, with with uh, another uh, um, with another year. So it was uh, Becker, some guy. Uh, he is one of the most cited scientists. Uh, you see his paper has 55. Uh, be, uh, previous uh, previous papers had like 20, 25,000 cit citations. It's a lot. It's, it's crazy. But uh, DJ is far more popular than, um, than LDA. And uh, a lot of people use it uh, in physics. Uh, I also use it in physics uh, because, uh, because it, it, it's good and it's cheap in computational cost. Uh, it's better than LDA. LDA also okay. As you as you noticed, uh, it's also okay to create some things like uh, uh, what to create graphite, uh, diamond, uh, silicon, uh, cubic silicon. So it's okay, but it's better. Uh, better and better. But uh, and uh, what was also good? Um, mm, what was also know how from this guy here? The say the, he says he says our functional our it's a, some traditional even if you uh, write a, 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 an article um, si, a single uh, so you you should use our our functional containing only one parameter uh, you can compare it with some uh, pw ninety two where is it was like b one b b two b three b four alpha one a and some other things, it has only one parameter. That's why it's it's uh, uh, it's better. It's uh, it's it's more simple to um, to add it to some uh, um, uh, to, to some nature. And that's the formula. So he takes this uh, parameter. This is only one parameter b, um, and uh, it was chosen to reproduce the now exchange energy for noble gases. If they created the noble gases like krypton or helium, this exchange energy uh, is created in some way. Uh, and uh, he uh, fitted his formula with this parameter. It's also rather, this, this uh, paper is also rather crazy mathematically. And we have another rather successful. Uh, functionals like BP H6, back F plus par, you. And we, you also, and I think you also noticed that these names they um, go from one functional to another. Perdue is we say Perdue Wang, Perdue Burg Enzenhoff, our next functional, um, Becker, um, and some other some, some other guys who also for Wang, yeah. Um, functional discrimination energy. So, so it, it, it this guys took this B eighty eight. Um, this correlation energy from 
Perdue Wang. So they, they took uh, per, from Perdue Wang uh, 92. Oh no, it's 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 it's, it's before. Uh, so so it predicts geometry. No, okay. The, the thing it was good for some spectroscopic investigations. Then uh, bleep. Uh, Becker Lee Young par. Uh, this uh, functional was uh, uh, popular among chemists, and uh, uh, because it is, uh, um, it can it can uh, predict predict this interatomic bonds rather good, and uh, uh, it's useful to create some uh, molecules and to create some uh, some chemical chemical reactions. And you you can see it's like. 107,000 uh, 107, uh, citations because it was, it's really still popular. And our uh, recordsman, PBE, uh, Berdy Burg Ezenhoff, um, it's very popular in physics and it's non empirical. So all previous um, functionals, they are empirical because they Include some uh, some uh, parameter we should to fit with some uh, with some data with some external data with some experimental some other thing, but these three guys Ernzenkov, Burke, and Perdue they uh, um, they have wrote this this paper general gradient approximation made simple. It's uh, it consists only of four or five uh, pages. I uh, um, I think I can uh, um, maybe maybe I have. Uh, uploaded uh, it in our Telegram channel, but uh, I will I will do it today. And you 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 and you, you can uh, you can read this uh, um, this, this paper. So they created non empirical um, uh, fun functional, and it's very popular. Nineteen ninety ninety six, and uh, you see how many guys used it in their equations, and maybe we can even. Uh, I think we we can even uh, check how how many uh, citations has uh, Perdue. John Perdue, you see. Uh, this is that guy. Uh, Ash index, one hundred twenty-two, three hundred eighty-eight thousand uh, citations. So his works are really uh, useful. A lot of people use uh, use his works. General gradient approximation and simple. It's among the most um, one hundred seventy nine. Yeah, seventy nine. And uh, I just made that screen few days ago, and it was like one hundred seventy seven. It's it's like two two thousand uh, um, in uh, in few days. Um, then he made also some another per, per one this uh, PW 92 28,000 and so on so uh, if you want to be if you want to have such so, no uh, okay I, I, I think that it's uh, uh, almost impossible to, to have such to have so many uh, citations and you have to create really useful methodology you had to create a really useful tool uh, for thousands of people across the world and uh, uh, it's 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 really hard but this guy made it Temple university let's check ah in Temple university there are some guys who <laughs> who has more citations donald rubin yeah it's crazy it's it's, re it's really crazy masatoshi it's biology. They have their their own atmosphere, and maybe we can check um, its dynamics. You see, um, dynamics grows each year. More people use this paper. Like uh, it was like uh, 2023, five years ago, it was like 13,000. Now it's like. Nineteen thousand people. So more, more and more people use it, use it because it's it's still actual. It's still um uh, good. I think and uh, uh we will use it. Yeah, I understand. 
I understand the problem. Yeah. That was uh, that was my few words about this popular um, uh, functionals and comparisons. Now we can include experiment to the comparison. We can include PD uh, as uh, most popular. We can include PW ninety one is DJ uh, is DJ uh, functional and uh, LDA and Hartley Fock, and you see the difference. Um, you see that uh, um, LDA overestimates energy of uh, hydrogen and uh, PBA and, uh, and, and both GDA functionals, they are rather cold, but LDA fog fails to deal with uh, uh, to, to deal with this system. Mm. And the mean uh, absolute error for Hartree fog for all the systems, 71, for uh, LDA, 31, but for PBE, 7.9. It's smaller than, uh, for another method, it's uh, it's still huge, but it's smaller for, from another method, and it's non-empirical. Non that's, that's, uh, um, that's very, very important. And we uh, and what about some uh, parameters we can create? We can create all these parameters, uh, for example, using quantum espresso, uh, crystal cell constants. ABC is it, uh, that was uh, cell DM uh, in uh, our relations. Uh, you see this experiment that DJ is rather good in the uh, uh, experiment. It, it, sometimes it shows very, very small error creating this, uh, this constant. For some, for some systems, it's not okay, uh, but uh, for most systems, it shows ra rather small error. But LDA, it is also, also rather good for crystal cell constants, but it usually shows some, some error and uh, it underestimates. Uh, DJ uh, sometimes overestimates uh, crystal constants, uh, crystal cell constants lens, but usually it's rather, it's very, very small. Uh, uh, error, cohesion er er energy. So we, we can take some crystals and we can destroy it and move all items on uh, infinite and we call it cohesion, co cohesion energy. We can also create it with DJ, with LDA, and we can see this error in electron volts. For some, for some uh, materials like C, it has like 1.5 electron volts, but it's not so huge. It's not. It's also not hu so huge. It's it's a, a, um, LTA uh, shows rather good uh, results, but if we can uh, uh, have even better results, which close to experimental, to experiment, um, we should use this uh, functional. What about band gap? Um, here, um. Uh, here are some uh, pictures, some plots to compare PBE uh, per de with uh, uh, G GW. GW are uh, quasi particle um, functionals. Uh, they are very heavy, they are very complex, and they show rather good uh, results in calculating a band gap. So, uh, some guys compare. This band gaps with GW, GW0, G0, W0, GW0, it means that we, we use different uh, approaches in the quasi particles methods. And PBE, the blue circle. And you see that uh, PBE still underestimates this band gap. For example, um, this material uh, CDS, cadmium S. We have like one something, but it's like two, so two, twice. Um, for argon eight, but it's close to sixteen because it's noble gas. It's noble gas, and we have a really huge uh, band gap. Uh, 
carbon uh, diamond for diamond that was that was uh, ah we have created diamond with LDA here we have LDA and we got something for for sun here is diamond but uh, in reality diamond is like six six something or, or, or uh, slightly smaller than six. so LDA uh, and GGA they uh, both uh, give some error on this uh, uh, band game. Um, LDA gives more error. GJ not so not so huge error, but they still underestimate. And we should and we should include it in our creation. For example, we make some creations. We should compare it with some experiment. Uh, uh, experimental guys come and say, "Oh, but we have two electron volts, but you have only one point five. Uh, your calculations are incorrect. You should uh, you should do something with it." And uh, you should uh, now you, you should keep in mind that uh, your creations always will be uh, lower than that gap if you use GJ or LDA. If you want to uh, to have some uh, more or less precise results, you should use more complex methods like GW. You see, it's almost uh, exact. It has almost exact results. Or HSE. HSE is height to say per you bunker Ezenhof and high society Ezenhof, but it's hybrid, hybrid functional. It's hybrid functional and it's the topic of uh, next lecture, which will be maybe in two weeks. Uh, and we will consider, uh, we, we just considered two first steps of this Jakob Sledder, uh, LDA and GJ. And next time, on next lecture, we will consider meta GJ, we will consider the hybrid functionals, we will consider this crazy things like GW and for now is it's over. Maybe you have some questions. Yeah, okay. So, uh, did I say correctly that this um, PBE method is also built upon the assumption of uh, uh, homogeneous or quantum yeah quantum yeah quantum all all of them so, yeah so it also should uh, like treat plan gaps not very precise. Yeah, you see PBA. Uh, precise ah, on, the, on this on this red on this red line precise. Um, C it's like uh, carbon carbon diamond mm -hmm. less than four or it's it's some for for something. But real it's like uh, five point seven or, or, or something. Uh, for uh, LDA LDA shows uh, uh, worse results for it. So LDA uh, shows worse results. Uh, GDA shows not so bad results. But it's also not exact. Mm -hmm. We also be it also will underestimate them. Yeah. And it's a real problem when we uh, work with uh, small gap materials because for small gap materials, uh, like uh, um, zero point two or zero point even zero point five, we can have uh, some band gap band, band structure with no gap. Mm -hmm. We can underestimate it in in so huge way that uh, we will have no bad. I think you showed this titanium you know, titanium or something like that. Yeah, it was the case. Yeah, it it, it was the case. It the titanium titanium diselenite. It's a uh, uh, we uh, it's it, titanium diselenite has very very small. Uh, uh, so it's semi metal. It means that it has. Uh, very small amount of states on the Fermi level, mm -hmm. and that's why. Uh, and when it goes to a change density wave state, it opens very small gap. But but uh, DJ can't get this. It gets this gap, and we should use some tricks like U on some other thing. U for Titan. Yeah. LDI, LDI yeah. because Titan is D D metal transition metal, and we should treat this D electrons. Can I say that PBE is a type of GGA, or not really? Or uh, they are two completely different. PBE is a part of GGA. Yeah. So GGA, uh, um, LGA, an approach. Uh, yeah, GGA is approach. Mm -hmm. LGA also approach, and we have some uh, uh functionals. Mm -hmm. Uh, for GGA, we um, I showed you this. Uh, this is popular uh, popular uh, functionals inside GGA. This is all GGA. Uh, this is very popular in physics. B lead or B3 lead. It's popular in uh, uh, chemistry. Uh, usually chemists use it uh, for to create some bonds. 
BPH6, I don't know. Some guys use it, uh, but uh, I think that okay, I think that this thing was so popular that um, people who use this, for example, they uh, go to this because it's like uh, I don't know, iPhone uh, <laughs> X or something, uh, and iPhone six or or four, five. Oh, that's all. Thank you for your attention, for your questions. Thank you.